The blindness of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone drew well. Salutations to the whole field elect out there. You Akim to Sadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. On the pre Shaman, and uh, we're going to be breaking down Daniel 11th chapter, the first couple verses. Um, Not going to do an entire breakdown on Daniel's 11th chapter because, as the apostles said, no one knows the entire breakdown of Daniel's 11th chapter, except the apostles, of course. But the few verses that I do know, um, that I was taught by my apostles, I'm going to get into. Uh, Daniel, the 11th chapter, deals with a lot of history. And um, I'm going to have the uh, uh, John Gill's commentary. It's a pretty good commentary uh, to sort of like, you know, scan over some of the uh, historical context of what was going on. Because there's a lot of secular history. When I say secular history, I mean canon and history recorded that's outside of the bible um but it did actually take place because you got to remember a lot of times when the scriptures is talking about these particular kings it's not going to name every single detail of king it's going to deal it's going to deal with some of the kings that um primarily have effect on us you know so um i also want to say bruce gore uh edomite scholar and he has a playlist and with his playlist he goes through a lot of church history now, this uh, particular play playlist right here called Historical Context of the Bible is 37 videos, and it deals with Genesis all the way down to, um, it goes all through it, all through the history. Um, there's a lot of stuff that he says that you do have to fact check. Um, and there's a lot of stuff concerning the scriptures. When he gets in the scriptures, you could just cut it off, you know, because, again, these Edomites are going to botch the scriptures. The Spirit's not working with them on that level, but if you want historical context... He's somebody I would recommend. Um, so we're going to go through it. Um, again, I'm going to use the uh, the John Gill commentary as a crutch. Just for the secular history part, you know. Because that's really the thing when you go into these particular chapters that deal with history. It's just really retaining that information in your mind. You know. Because a lot of it already happened. You know. Um, then there's 11 and 1. It says, also, in the first year of Darius the Mede. Even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. Now, Darius to me, we spoke about secular history. There was a king by the a name of uh, Astyages, which is not found here in Daniel. Uh, but it is in um, Bell and the Dragon. And most uh, scholars associate Darius to me with this individual here. And here's a precept. This is Bell and the Dragon, chapter 1, verse 1. And, and King Astyages... Um, when you look this guy up in the secular history, he says that he didn't have any uh, uh, children because he was he uh, was foretold that um, one of his children would usurp him from his position. Um, that's actually why he wanted to put an attempt, assassination attempt on King Cyrus's life. So again, that's secular stuff, secular history. Uh, those are because these heathens have their own canon, just like how our canon is a Bible to go through our history. A lot of people think the Bible is just a fairy tale book. It actually is a book that deals with a lot of history. These heathens also recorded their own history. And um, you can read about people like Astyages through their canons. It says, and, the, and King Astyages was gathered to his fathers, and Cyrus of Persia received his kingdom. And a uh, funny thing about Cyrus is uh, Cyrus did not kill this guy that wanted to put an attempt on his life as a child. King Cyrus was seen throughout the time as a, a king that uh, dealt very uh, honorable with these different nations. He was he was one he was one of the he was one to the effect that he wouldn't necessarily conquer you, but he will make you an ally to his expanding kingdom. You would just have to pay tribute, you know. He's also known for letting us what go back to our land, um, uh, to build up uh, Jerusalem. With, I believe, the governor at the time was Shelzabar. This is also in the book of 2 Ezra, the 4th chapter. Uh, 1 Ezra, uh, in the Apocrypha, the 4th chapter. <clears throat> King Cyrus was also called the Most High's anointed in the Hebrew Mashiach, which the Most High did anoint this guy for his purpose. See, the Most High has, um, the Most High works with particular heathen kings just for his purpose, man. These guys are not going to receive any salvation or anything like that.
but they were appointed by the Most High to do a particular task. King Cyrus is one of those kings throughout the history. So, boom, Darius the Mede, or Astyages, um, was uh, made head over Babylon after uh, Belshazzar um, was, uh, was taken out of power. This is the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. All right, because his father, again, we're going into secular history, his father um, worshipped the deities of his mother. You know, so when it says Daniel was made uh, third in the kingdom, that was because uh, Belshazzar wasn't the king of Babylon. His father was. He was second. And then Daniel, right under him, will be named third. All right. So that's another secular history. We also went into this on it's on GMS at the point. The channel is blocked right now, suspended right now. But we went into this history ourselves. And you can watch a playlist when we go through uh, that particular. We mentioned, it, you know, we'll be going through different timelines of the prophets and some of the stuff that were happening at their time. OK. Um, it says, uh. Daniel 11 and 1, also I in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. So uh, Daniel, um, he, he, the Most High made these different kings from the Babylonian kings uh, to the, even the Persian king um, have mercy upon him and, and held him in high regards. Remember, Daniel was put in the lion's den not once but twice um, under uh, Darius and under Cyrus, or under Astyages and under Cyrus, and both kings wanted him to be saved. All right, because the most I was working with Daniel, which, if you can receive it, um, this is Joseph. Verse 2 And now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet, up yet three kings, and the fourth shall be far richer. Then they all. So we're going to go through the commentary here. Now, um, I, I know these kings, but I kind of want to read through the commentary as well. Um, this is the John Gill commentary concerning those three kings. They have Cyrus, which reigned alone. After his death, Darius the Mede, his uncle. Um, Again, this is not to be read that Darius to me came after Cyrus. This is me meant to be read as which were Cyrus stop right there, who reigned alone after the death of Darius to be his uncle, which we read about in the first verse. Cambyses, Cambyses or Cambyses, depending on the pronunciation, he actually reigned from Egypt. All right, so he was, uh, and he didn't, he didn't um, show much favor to us because when you read about uh, Ezra concerning the building of the temple. Um, he allowed, he was one of those kings that said the heathens could go ahead and, uh, the heathens went to complain to him about, um, Jerusalem building the temple. And then we had to say, look, you know, Cyrus gave us the decree, check your annals that we could build. But the thing with this guy, Cambyses, was since he rules from Egypt, he wasn't too involved with what was going on closer, all right, to his kingdom. It says, Cambyses, the son of Cyrus, and Darius... Um, his his the piece. There was another. Uh, it says there was another between Cambyses and Darius called Smyrtus, the magician. Bruce Gore calls this guy pseudo Smyrtus, and he's pretty much he was a usurper, an imposter. All right. Some might have him as a Bardia, in the Greek. All right. He was uh he tried to usurp the throne. And um, there was an annual written about how they got it back. It was a crazy story of how they got it back and how they had to see. There was a lot of infightings in this uh, in the uh, uh, Persian um, rulership. Same thing with the Assyrians, which were before. There's always a lot of infighting, even amongst these Edomites, even unto this day, right? Don't we have uh, the Trump Party and the Biden Party conspiring against each other? So this is this is the Most High, man. So these heathens always sort of fight. And we all know when a kingdom is divided, that's what makes it fall, right? It can't stand. It says, who reigned but seven months and being an imposter is left out. Uh, as he is in Ptolemy's canon. Um, 
Very important note right here. It says, not that these were all the kings of Persia after Darius the Mede, for according to the above canon, they reigned six more after them. But because these kings had connection with the Jews, which we are the real Jews, the Negroes, uh, Haitians, West Indians, uh, Judah's primarily uh, the Negroes here in America. Well, you know, you have um, the West Indians and, and so-called Haitians that were lumped up together in Babylon, they call us all Jews as a derogatory term. And other than them, their affairs had different turns and changes. So in other words, there were little skirmishes and uh, different little guys popped up and uh, popped up in there, but in their in the in the historical uh, canon, but the scriptures uh, pinpointed those ones that had a direct effect on what we had going on in our homeland. Um, and when you go to Wikipedia, you can kind of see the names of these kings. Cause remember these guys were not really being called Xerxes and Darius and all that kind of stuff. They actually had some long ass heathenistic names, man. Um, it says, and for the fourth shall be far richer. I so it's, it's, like, it's like, let me read that again. Verse two. And now, uh, we, uh, and now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there stand, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. We just went through them. Did I? Did I? Yeah. All right. Um, Cyrus, uh, Darius, <coughs> Salakia. Cyrus, Cambyses, uh, um, Pseudo Smyrtus. Um, let me get it again. Salakia. This thing is a lot of got a lot of stuff to remember. Okay, Cyrus, Cambyses, Darius, Pseudosmyrtus, which doesn't count. And of course, that fourth king being um, uh, Xerxes. Let's see if I got that right again. Bible. Three. Okay, behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia. Cyrus. We have Cyrus one. Um, Darius Epestes, which this same Darius, we could read about him in the, in the, in the Apocrypha, um, in the book of, uh, Ezra, fourth chapter. There was another between Cambyses and Darius, right? So in the, in order it should be, uh, it should be Cambyses. It should be that pseudo smurthus guy or, or, or Bardia, then Darius. And then you have Xerxes. Darius is the one that gave, um, or Darius the first is the one that gave, um, uh, Ezra's, that's like, it, that gave Zerubbabel the riddle to answer when we read about that in first Ezra, the fourth chapter. Okay. So again, you know, repetition is the key to learning, right? It says, and now I will show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings, which is Cyrus, uh, Cambyses, uh, Pseudo Smyrtus, uh, Darius. But we don't count. So we don't. We don't count that dude, Bardia. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Slacky, slacky, brother. And now I will show thee uh, the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings. These are three kings that came after Cyrus. These are the three kings that came after Cyrus, which that makes perfect sense now. So after Cyrus, here we go. After Cyrus, we had Cambyses, we had Bardia or Pseudosmotors, then we had uh, Darius, and that fourth king is Xerxes. Pardon me, that's the uh, that's the breakdown right there. It says, and now I will show thee the, the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer. That first, that fourth that shall be far richer is uh, Xerxes. So again, brothers, pardon me that in the second verse. Um, the three kings are three kings after Cyrus, three kings after Cyrus. We just went through them. And again, if you go through, uh, like if you was to go to Wikipedia, they might have, they might have it. Or you, if you was to go to the, uh, Persian records, they might have, again, these, uh, different small names that you see. That's, that's not expressly in the scriptures, but we're dealing with the ones that had a direct uh, effect on our people. I just list those names off. It says, and the fourth shall be richer then they all, and uh, this king is uh, King Xerxes, all right? He's the one that you see in the movie 300. Did he look like that, like in the movie 300? No, he had a long 
beard, long hair, when you see them depicted in their, uh, in their culture. That was just artistic, um, artistic decision by Frank Miller and, and Zack Snyder that put together that, that, uh, that movie. It says, and now will I show thee the truth. Behold, there shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all, which is Xerxes, right? So, um, which is also the, uh, husband of Esther. He's also found in the book of Esther, the Xerxes, Xerxes, under a different, uh, name. Um, Xerxes is the Greek, and in the Hebrew, uh, in the Hebrew, let's find out, let's find out. See, that's, that's the thing about this, uh, here it is, Asaurus. Source. Alright, I think if you click it, Strongs will tell you that this is Xerxes. The title of the King of Persia, probably Xerxes. Alright, so let's go back. Where we were at, we're in Daniel 12, 11 and 2. So see, this Bible is more than, this is not a fairy tale book. This is a book that deals with history, man. Alright, so it says, There shall stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth shall be far richer than they all. And by his strength, through his riches, they shall stir up all against the realm of Grisha. And uh, Xerxes, he really wanted Greece, man. He really wanted to conquer the Greeks. Because uh, the Greeks were divided into city-states. It was under him that made the uh, Greeks unite. Because they were wanted to unite against a common enemy, which was the Persian. And ultimately, um, the best way you could compare this is pretty much like you know, the United States being beat by a small country like Iran. See how the tables have turned, how the Greeks now are the large uh, conquering force and the Persians, which are the Iranians, are the smaller force. Well, back then, in this time that we're reading, it was the other way around. All right, the Persian, uh, they had over 150 uh, provinces. You know, there was uh, three times the land mass uh, land conquered than the United States. So there was a huge, vast kingdom. However, the Mosai wanted to raise up the next king, uh, which was uh, a king that would be the king of the Grecians, Alexander, to take down uh, the Persian Empire, which he eventually did, which was Darius III. All right, so it says, shall stir up against the realm of Grecia, Xerxes did, and a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. Uh, that mighty king is Alexander. Alexander the Creep, Alexander the Great Faggot, or just Alexander the Great, as the history call him. Uh, we like to say great in wickedness because he was great in wickedness. But the most I was also working with this dude uh, for, for prophecy's sake. All right. Um, man, we can. There's so much history to get into Alexander. And a lot of this stuff, man, you really got to always go over it because, you know, you could go over it. And you could just lose it, like your memory, just forget, because there's so much information, you know. Um, certain brothers have better memories than others, and certain brothers are able to regurg regurgitate things better than others. So, you might see a brother fly through it and hit every single point, you know, without jogging his memory from all the repetition. And certain brothers, man, like myself right now, um, I've, I've went through it, but, you know, again, the information... It's time you got to jog your memory back. I got the uh, the uh, the commentaries to help me out. You know, Esau does search these things out. The apostles also broke these things down. I should also mention that the apostles, you could type in, you know, Daniel's 11, apostles of GMS, elders of GMS. See some of these uh, videos. All right. So it says, verse 4, And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, it shall be divided towards the four winds. Now, this is the point I want to make about the uh, the secular history. His kingdom was actually divided into, uh, af after his death, into, um, right, immediately after his death, it wasn't divided right away into four because you had, uh, well, let's see what the commentary has. It says, which seems to be respect to the four horns, okay, came up. 
Um, they have here Ptolemy, which reigned in Egypt, the south. Antigonus, which reigned in Asia. Uh, to the north, Seleucus in Babylon. And Cassander in uh, Macedonia to the west. So they have, um, they have Ptolemy, which ruled in Egypt, right? Um, Seleucus would later take over Antigonus's uh, reign in Asia with a joint uh, partnership with uh, Ptolemy. All right, because this guy Antigonus, uh, he was a fighter, but he lost a very historical battle, which made Seleucus uh, gain reign in Asia, um, which would ultimately uh, Asia, parts of Syria, which will ultimately set up the six Syrian wars which this 11th chapter goes into, okay, uh, uh, Babylon, and uh, they have uh, Seleucus in Babylon and Syria to the east, and Cassandra in Macedonia to the west, now let me see if another commentary would have the, uh, the initial five, they put four, but uh, let's see, Marking the fulfillment of Daniel 8 and 8. Let's see. Yep, yep, it looks up with Daniel 8 chapter. So the four were, uh, it was um, Ptolemy, it was Cassander, it was Lysimaeus, and it was Seleucus. But also you had Antigonus, all right? So immediately after his death, it was five. And these wars lasted a number of years, a number of different generals that wanted to uh, take this uh, particular throne. They didn't have Lacamaeus. Lac Lac Lacimaeus, Lacimaeus in there, in that commentary. I was trying to find it. They didn't have it. But um, Antigonus was one of the generals. So when you look in the secular history, you're going to see that you had five immediate uh, uh, rulers under um, Alexander that wanted to fight for his throne. All right. Also, you might see that they said that on his deathbed, he said Cassander. But Cassander also means the strongest. Or they did, so they didn't know they were talking about actual Cassandra or the or stronger, strongest or uh, the Greek word, which is similar to the name Cassandra, which means like let the strongest rule. So they began to fight, and these wars lasted a number of years, a number of years. It wasn't just immediately split into four. So when you look into the secular history, that's what you're gonna find. But the four that it's talking about ultimately was Cassandra. Lysimaeus or Lacimaeus, pardon me for my pronunciation, um, Ptolemy and Seleucus, all right? <clears throat> it says, for his kingdom shall be, it says, um, and there, and when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken and shall be divided towards the four winds, all right? Which these winds are north, south, east, and west, his kingdoms are divided uh, by one king of the north, one king of the south, one king of the east, and one king of the west of heaven. It says, and not to the posterity, right, not to his children, not to his particular heirs. Uh, he did have a son, though, in the uh, history, but it wasn't given to him, right? It says this kingdom, the kingdom was not given to him, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled, for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for uh, even for others besides those and uh he died on a sudden you know at a very young age i believe 32 he started ruling in his 20s died in his 30s and um no one knows expressly the cause 
of his death, but he suffered a great illness, and this was the most I taken him out because he just the scripture said he moved swiftly. He was just conquered from one kingdom to the next. The man wanted to to uh, Hellenize or Greekize or Westernize, pretty much modern day, the entire world, all all he could see, and that was the most I put in that spirit on him to want to do that. Verse five, and the king of the south shall be strong. And one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him and have dominion. His dominion shall be great dominion. Now, this is going into the Ptolemaic dynasty, uh, the Ptolemaic dynasty. Um, let's go back to these uh, commentary, see what they have here. And the king of the south shall be strong. That is the king of Egypt. This is correct because Egypt is south of the land of Israel. Uh, Syria is north of the land of Israel. And as these kings fluctuated throughout the um, Seleucid dynasty and the Ptolemaic dynasty, uh, they had different um, um, they had different uh, uh, let's see um, I would say laws on how they should govern Israel because you wanted to be cool with Israel before because if you were in Egypt, if you're in Egypt, all right, and you want to you want to head north. You have to pass through. You have to pa you have to go past uh, Israel, and if you need victuals, if you need some something for your men, you wanted to be on good terms with one of the people you kept in subjection. However, you're gonna see that they had different rulers throughout the Ptolemaic dynasty and throughout the um, uh, Seleucid dynasty that just put straight hell on us, man. Because Alexander had us keep our laws, statutes, and commandments because he had a dream. All right, that he uh, saw the high priest, because and that's in the um, Josephus. That account is in the Josephus. He had a dream that he had a, he saw the high priest that he kneeled when he saw the high priest, and his men go on to say, "Why are you kneeling to this man?" And Alexander says, "I'm not kneeling to this man, but I'm kneeling to their God because I saw it in a vision from when I was a youth." Okay. It says, "This is the king of Egypt, which lay south to Syria, and Syria lay north to Egypt." And therefore, the king of one is called the king of the south, and the other the king of the north throughout this prophecy. And by the king of the south, or Egypt, is here meant Ptolemy Lagus, one of Alexander's generals, who had Egypt for his, for his share. And a very powerful king he was, for he reigned over Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, Ethiopia, Arabia, Phoenicia, Colossiria, Cyprus and several isles in the Aegean Sea and many cities in Greece. Um, and one of his princes, uh, they got Ptolemy, the king of Egypt. Um, Ptolemy became the king of Egypt because um, Alexander was well favored in Egypt. But there was a particular uh, uh, ceremony, which is taking the uh, pretty much the body um Told him he got a hand on Alexander's body, was able to parade it through Egypt, and they saw him as their next uh, king because Egypt loved um, Alexander. By the way, Alexander Egypt was filled, was filled with Jews, the real Jews, that is, the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Well, sorry, the Negroes, right? There was a ton of Negroes in Alexander Egypt, all right? Um... There was a ton of uh, there was a ton of um, uh, Jews, our people in Egypt, and uh, this is in and there's an historical account where it says um, one of the generals of Egypt saved Ptolemy's life um, in an assassination attempt, Ptolemy the Third, and um, that that particular um, person was an Israelite, all right, because. The whole concept of the Septuagint, um, which is translating the, the Bible into Greek, that all the Israelites that are scattered abroad may read it. You had a lot of um, Jews in Alexandria, Egypt. All right. Last time I checked that, last time I checked the history, it said that it grew to about 70 percent. It was all just Jews. Like we, we, we took over that place, man. And we were doing plays. And they actually have these, man. They actually have like um, um, writings and, and hieroglyphs, if you will, and uh, different documentations of how they were doing plays in the uh, theaters, recreating the 
the flood and all that. We're creating a flood, we're creating us passing through Egypt, and that was our people putting together these plays um, um, back then, man, to go through the history. No different than, a let's say, a Jake putting together a movie about what happened, all right, with uh, Noah and then Moses and such. So they translated the Bible um, uh, to, to Greek. Now that all the people that were scattered all over the broad speaking this one heathenistic tongue could uh, get the history because we lost our heritage, we lost our language. You know, we lost our we lost who we were. The the the, the uh, library in Alexandria, Egypt, that Ptolemy put together. Uh, can't remember which Ptolemy that is right now off the top of my head, but um, it was a it was a huge library, and he wanted that pretty much he wanted all types of history there. And all that. It will eventually be burned down later in history, but yeah. So Ptolemy was uh declared king over Egypt. He had passed the body through Egypt of Alexander. And there was constant wars between the Seleucids and the Ptolemaic uh dynasty for this particular uh uh dominion. You know, the last Ptolemy being uh Cleopatra. Um, Cleopatra, by the way, was not a black woman. Okay, she was a so-called Jew, Edomite woman, and she wasn't fair. She wasn't pretty. You know, even the secular history says she wasn't very, a, a, a very attractive woman. You know, and there was a lot of inbreeding in the Ptolemaic dynasty. These guys were marrying uh, and laying with their sisters and such. Man, since afterwards called the king of the north, having Syria for his part, which lay to the north of Egypt, as before observed. And he shall be strong above him and have dominion, that is, be a greater and more powerful prince than Ptolemy, king of Egypt. His dominion shall be a great dominion, even greater than the others, for he reigned over Macedonia, Greece, Thrace, Asia, Syria, Babylon, Media, and all the eastern countries as far as India, even from Tar Taurus to the river Indus, and so likewise from Taurus to the Aegean Sea. And these two are only mentioned who shared Persian monarchy because the Jews were only affected by them for the sake of whom they prophesied, the prophecy is delivered. So that was a little commentary on Daniel's the fifth chapter. You know, you got to see, man, like these are, these Bible scholars, man, they go into things. They go into, they go into things. You can see different commentaries. Um, you know, you use them when it goes through the history. When it's going into history, a lot of times they'll, they'll be on point with it. Now, when it goes into prophecies, you know, that's when you got to, you know, always go back to the apostles. Even with the history, you know, double check with the, the apostles. Make sure, you know, things line up uh, with, the, you know, the breakdowns that the apostles have that uh, with uh, some of the stuff that these uh, historians have. Again, uh, these historians are going to have a lot of secular details, which is uh, history gathered and put together by these heathens. So if you want secular details, you could, you know, that's why kinda, it's good to just study that stuff. It says, and the king of the south shall be strong, <clears throat> one of his princes, and he shall be strong above him, and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. And in the end years, they shall join themselves together, for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north. Right. Um, uh, one of the Ptolemy's daughters will marry, uh, I believe it's Antiochus the Great, Antiochus the, Antiochus the Great. To make an agreement. I believe he gave his daughter Bernice. Let's 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 look at it. Let's look at it before I even because I'm just going off what I remember and my memory could be foggy, but let's see. It says the two kings of Egypt, the two kings um of Egypt and Syria, not the two former kings, but their success but their successors. The king of Egypt was Ptolemy Philadelphia, the second king of Egypt, the son of uh Ptolemy Lagus. This is the king of Egypt who collected such a vast number of books into his library in Alexandria. Oh, there you go. So it was Ptolemy Lagos. This is the one I was mentoning. Uh, under him, the, Septu the Septuagint was put together. And got the law of Moses translated into the Greek. Um, this is the Septuagint again. The king of Syria was Anti Antio Antiochus, a uh, surname Theos. So pardon me. I believe Antiochus Theos was Antiochus. No, Antiochus III was Antiochus the Great. There's a many different Antiochuses, man. You know, so I like just how there was many different Ptolemies. It says this name was the first given by him, by the Malaysians, upon um, his delivering 
them from the tyranny of Oman. The third, this was the third king of Syria, Seleucus Nicodemus the first, Antiochus Sotus the second, and this is the third. There have been very great wars between these kings for many years, and now being weary of them, they entered. Okay, right. So there was a couple different wars um, between these different particular kings. Uh, the the commentary uh, goes on to mention some of them, which is Theos, Antiochus Soter. Um, he also had a Ptolemy Soter too. So, so these guys are going back and forth. These particular Syrian wars were going on. Uh, the history has six total. It says so. Pretty much, they wanted to come to a truce, right? Uh, the commentary goes on to say, being weary of them, they entered into confederacies and alliances with each other, uh, and which were designed. To be strengthened by marriage next mentioned. See, what I could do is I could have like a web page open. And um, as I'm going through these scriptures, you know, jump back and forth between the web pages and the uh, web pages going into the history and the scriptures. But I'm using the commentary because I could keep it all in one particular app. This is thought to be about 70 years after the death of Alexander. It says for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king. Of the north and make an agreement right so this is this I, I mentioned it and this was right this was bernice the daughter of ptolemy philadelphus king of egypt who carried her to uh, pelusium and f and for and from then says uh then sailed with her to seleucia in syria where he uh he met with antiochus king of syria to whom he gave her in marriage Okay, and we uh had uh we had gone through this years ago. Every now and again, the apostles test us, and you go through this history, you put it together, you get quizzed, and you know, depending on how good your memory is, it holds. Sometimes you know you kind of just lose that the very deep. So like again, it's just it's a lot of details. You know, it's a lot of just going through history. Um, I want to say this particular king was Antiochus the uh, Great that was given to Bernice. Um. Let me go ahead and see if another commentary made I have that. Okay, so it was Antiochus Theus, the king of Syria. Um... Okay, we know that this thing will not uh, eventually last. That's just going to say that in the scriptures. All right, so Ptolemy gave one of his daughters to the, uh, his daughter Bernice. Okay, to Antiochus Theos, which I believe was Antiochus II. Antiochus III was Antiochus the Great. And ultimately, you would have Antiochus the uh, Fourth which is epiphanies. <clears throat> Man, next time I should just probably put together the chart because um, one thing you could do, when I say chart, I mean um, you could Google these guys' uh, lineages because there's so many different Ptolemies and Antiochuses that you kind of just forget linking the titles, which, 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 which with, you know, with who was first, second, third, and such. It says, And in the end of the years, they shall join themselves together for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north, which again, which was Bernice, was given to Antiochus Theos, they have there, to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the power of the arm, because this, this, uh, this ultimately, this allegiance would not last. Neither shall he stand, neither shall he stand, nor his arm, but he shall be given up. And they that brought her, and he that begat her, and he... That strengthened her in these times because uh, I believe, hmm, let me not even say it. Let's see what they got here. And then uh, if it's correct, it will jog my memory. Because there's a lot of treachery going on between these uh, these uh, Edomites. It says, this was Bernice, daughter of Ptolemy, Philadelphus, king of Egypt, who carried her to, read that part. Um, we want to deal with this, but she shall not retain the power of his harm. Uh, to unite the two kingdoms and secure peace, right? Because this, uh, the, uh, there was treachery there. I believe uh, it was gonna, it's gonna go into uh, them being poisoned. It says unite the two kingdoms and secure the peace of them, 
which was the thing in view, nor retained her interest in her husband, nor her power at court, for as soon as her father was dead, uh, Antiochus dismissed Bernice from his bed and took Laodice, his former wife again, by whom he had two sons. Uh, they have uh, Seleucus Callinuscus and Antiochus Ariacus. Right. Ptolemy passed away. He didn't have, he didn't hold to the agreement. Um says, neither shall he stand nor his arm, neither Antiochus, for Laodice, knowing that by the late treaty, the crown was settled upon the children of Bernice, who already had sons by him, and sensible of his fickleness, and fearing he might divorce her again, and take to Bernice, got him poisoned. Yes, Laodice poisoned. Yep, that's right, Laodice poisoned uh, um, that king because of this self-same purpose, you know. Because uh, they want to, you know, it just it just went into it. Uh, fearing that she might lose a position, her, her sons poisoned this man. By his servant, nor Bernice, his queen, called his arm, who fleeing to da uh, Daphne for shelter on hearing what was done, uh, was there slain. Or maybe his son, or it may be his son, Yet by her, so it follows. But pretty much they both will go on to perish. Um, well, she shall be given up, given up into the hands of Seleucus uh, Calenus, the son of Laodice, whom she placed on the throne after the death of his father, and who said to Daphne to be, who and who sent to Daphne to slay Bernice, which was accordingly done. So there's a lot of uh, history going on here, you know. Um, a lot of treachery, uh, a lot of fighting going on for the uh, kingdom. Again, the only reason we're going into these people here is because under each dominion, um, you know, they will put hell on our people. They will put hell on Jake, man. They wanted to Greekanize us, um, which uh, my people did succumb to that. That's in the book of the Maccabees, building stadiums, doing procedures like reverse circumcisions, uh, wearing that hat, that funny hat that NFL players wear today to, like, to block the sun out. Like like that hat when they got the string on it that goes back to that that, that Greek stuff, all right? They, it's, it's like this, that you know reincarnation, man. A lot of the spirit of the ancient world gets brought back right into uh today's time. So that little um hat you see, yeah, you see a lot of NFL players have it. They have the team on it has a string that goes around your neck and it has like the sun visor brim. They had that in the ancient world for the uh, particular gladiators, and those that exercise in the gyms. Says, uh, and they that brought her into Syria that attended her from Egypt at her marriage and continued with her in the court of Syria and fled with her to Daphne and they begat her and they strengthened her in these times. Okay, so that was the sixth verse pretty much going into the treachery that was done, the slaying of uh, Bernice and Antigas by uh, uh, Laodicea and her heirs. It says, but out of the branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north and shall deal against them and shall prevail. Now, let's see. Um, out of out of a branch or out of her roots shall shoot forth um, our men by our ancestors. Right. So a lot of time when you hear root. And branches is going into ancestry, just like in the book of Malachi, the fourth chapter, where it says it shall leave them neither root nor branch concerning the destruction, concerning the destruction of America. It's talking about actual roots and branches, but it's twofold. It's also saying that there's not going to be any heirs left here in America when this place is destroyed, meaning you're not going to have any doomsday prepper of the line of, of Esau survive this coming destruction. Right. So, oh, just like our Lord, the, the root and offspring of David, um, Scriptures also say in um, uh, the Maccabees came forth a wicked root. So when you hear roots, branches, again, it goes into ash and uh, ancestry. All right. So the commentary goes on to say, um, our men by ancestry, particularly, particularly Ptolemy Lagus, all right, by a branch from thence, Ptolemy Philadelphus, her father, um, 
by the shoot out of that or its plantation as the Vulgate Latin version one. Ptolemy Eugrates, who succeeded her father in the kingdom, had stood firm in it upon his basis, as some render it. Um, hmm. It's locked here. All right, so this is going into the the uh, one of the Syrian wars, one of the the wars between, um, of course, one of the Ptolemies uh, seeking revenge on one of the kings of the north. Uh, by name, they have here uh, Seleucus Calenus. Ptolemy entered into Syria itself, um, as Polybius A says, into the fortified cities of it and took them. And this is going to go back and forth, man. As you read throughout the 11th chapter, you're going to have particular wars where the uh, king of the south is on top. And you're going to have uh, particular wars where the king of the north, uh, one of the Seleucus, um, uh, will win, you know. So Daniel 7, let's see if we can get this out. They have you great tears. Yep. So here's the pool commentary. So, of that particular root, my ancestry, all right, he's talking about the ancestry of uh, Bernice, shall come Ptolemy Eugrates, who shall be king, and revenge the wrong done to his sister. For he invaded Syria, and took many strongholds with a great part of Syria, and shall prevail, i.e. shall be conqueror, and destroy Callinicus with his mother, whose treachery hereby repaid. So this particular commentary summed it up a lot better uh, of what happened there in the 7th verse. Pretty much going into treachery for treachery. It says, And also shall carry captives into Egypt, their gods with their princes, and with their precious vessels of silver and of gold, and shall continue more years than the king of the north. Now, Ptolemy Eugrates, this guy is all also mentioned in the book of Sirach, all right? When you when you go through the book of Sirach, it tells you which particular Ptolemy was ruling when uh, Jesus, the son of Sirach, put together the, the Apocrypha. Because what was happening around that time is, as we mentioning uh, the Greeks, the Greeks were going around Hellenizing the world and wanted the world to have what they call Greek wisdom. They felt that their wisdom was superior, their way of living, their way of of, of of beliefs was superior to any other nation and a lot of people were succumbing a lot of our people were succumbing to that as wisdom so under this particular rule you had uh a man by the name of in the greek jesus all right but really that's uh yahweh shai but not to be confused with our lord yahweh shai uh jesus or yahweh shai um is the english transliteration in english transliteration is the name joshua so you had a, a a a man by the name of Joshua that had a lot of wisdom and his great and his grandson was was also named Joshua all right would bring together the accounts of some of the wisdom that his grandfather had all right so not to be confused you had Jesus his son was Sirach and his son was called Jesus again all right the grandson gathered together wisdom that was put together by his grandfathers, his fathers, of our wisdom. To teach our people, to say, look, you think this Greek shit is wisdom? You think they way of live, living is wisdom? No, this is real wisdom, all right? And what what he did was he translated what his, the, uh, the different accounts of wisdom that his grandfather put together. That was in the Hebrew that they had a hard time interpreting. Not everything... But there were certain things they kind of got lost in translation, but they tried to the best of their ability, all right, to translate it into the Greek tongue, which was difficult because you lose certain forces. You know, even today when you, you, you ask certain people, yo, what that mean in English when they speak Spanish? They say, man, I can't, I can't, I can't really find the best word. And they try to find the word closest to what it means because it, it tends to lose a lot of the force when you translate it over, you know, but they did to the best of their ability what they could. To give to our people 
which was all up into the Ptolemaic Greek wisdom at that time, Eucrates. All right. Real wisdom. All right. So that's what that whole. That's when you read the book of Sirach. That's what he's trying to. That's what he's trying to convey to our people. Real wisdom, according to our ancestors. All right. That believed in the Mosai, believed in these scriptures, and not to fall privy to the wisdom of the Greeks. It says, And shall so carry captives into Egypt, their gods with their princes, and with their precious vessels of silver and of gold, and he shall continue more years in the king of the north. So this guy outlived. Uh, whichever Seleucus was uh, ruling at that particular time. Let's, if we want to go by name, let's see if they have the names here. All right, so Ptolemy, Eugrates, the benefactor of all these things, that particular war. It says, he shall continue more years than the king of the north. He continued 46 years. Wow. And had subdued all Seleucus kingdoms and had not been recalled. So this guy had a very long reign. They have here 46 years in the history. Um, see, uh, we got Gilga here. According to the canon of Ptolemy, this king of Egypt reigned 25 years. Uh, and now lived to lose this king of Syria four years. So this one has four years. Okay, so Ptolemy uh, continued more years in Seleucus Calanus. He died in exile by a fall from his horse. Ptolemy agreed to survive him four or five years. Okay, so I'm not going to get, I'm not going to say which, I'm not going to ultimately decide how long this guy reigned. But one thing we do know that he reigned longer than the Seleucus king than Calanus. And most scholars here have about four or five years. So that's how we kind of word it. You know what I'm saying? Because when you go into these different scholars, you know, they're going to, you know, we're not going to get into the minutia of the years exactly where these guys reign, all right? We just want to know exactly what's kind of happening, all right? If we want to get detail, we might go into the name of these particular kings, all right? But certain things are just minute details, all right? We understand that this particular king, Eugrates, leaves longer, uh, by certain scholars, say, four or five years than the king of the uh, North Seleucus Calanus. Kaliniscus. Let's see. Verse 9. I think I'll stop at 10. I might stop here. It says, So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return into his own land. But his son shall be stirred up, but his sons shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of great forces. And one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. Then shall he return and be stirred up even to his fortress. Let's go to the pool here. Pool kind of sums it, sums it up. His son shall be stirred up. He means the sons of the kings of the north, Antiochus, and so oh, here we go now. Antiochus and Seleucus, uh, current Seranus shall be increased with the deeds of Ptolemy Eugratesis and his son Ptolemy Philopater. So we see that the kings of the north are being stirred up once again against the kings of the south. Right? One shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. This means Antiochus the Great, which is also into Antiochus III. Because the other Seleucus, his brother, Seleucus Seranus, is taken off by poison. At the beginning, he shall pass through Syria and recover what the king of Egypt took from his father, which he did. Um, again, these are what you call the Syrian wars between the Ptolemies and the uh, Seleucus di uh, dynasty line. And uh, we're just sort of going into the detail of what's happening because this is the account that Daniel's recounting. All right. Well, at the time, really prophesying. All right. You know, that's another thing I want to put out there because um, Esau would say that 
you know, the book of Daniel is a fairly fairy tale and it was put together after these events. No, Daniel was prophesying, man. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel wasn't on the scene when these things were happening. He was prophesying the things that were happening. The angels was, was, was giving him these uh, revelations, man. And he's going into the great detail of the things that happened. It says to his fortune. That's crazy how Daniel is speaking in the past tense of things that's happening in the future that will happen in this future. You know? Beat for beat, line for line. That's the Lord. Alright, so this so these particular kings right now that we're dealing with is uh going into uh Antiochus the Great <clears throat> and Tola Philippator, right? <clears throat> in the tenth verse. All right. It says, and one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through. That is to be understood, Antiochus or Antiochus the Great, for Seleucus died in the third year of his reign, being slain in Phrygia uh, through the treachery of Nicanator. And <laughs> see, so that these, these Edomites were killing each other off, man. That's how come we say that year to new world order that they're trying to establish today, but there's infighting, all right? That's the, that these devils are doing the same thing under the Greeks, the Romans. They were trying to kill each other. They usurp power. And they're doing the same thing today, man. Hey, didn't they assassinate uh, Kennedy, right? He's an Edomite. You know, he's 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 in the he's in the know. But they took his ass out. So they 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 was doing the same treachery, poison, and and deceit to take each other out. Today they use like uh what they do today, um, instead of like they might murder each other. Every every so often, every couple of years, to try to assassinate one another, but they do a lot of uh, bribery against one another. That's how I come to make it in this society. They have to have some type of dirt on you, all right. A lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, initiations into these societies, you have to do some filthy acts so they can have leverage over you, and so they attack each other through the media. You know, might release information on on some of the, the shit you're doing to try to tarnish your reputation, to try to usurp you out of power. And the, you know they buy up news media, and the media influence the mind of the people. So it's the same kind of um, let's rule the world type thing, but fighting over who should do it, you know, going on here that happened back then. So uh, out of the two. Antios was the great to see to him and the lone headed his armies, the armies they had collected and, uh, and with which like an, in, 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 in inundation of water to which armies are sometimes compared, he attacked Seleucia and took it and entered into cold Syria and over and overran it, uh, being delivered into the hands by the treachery of Theodotus who governed there for Ptolemy. Whom he had offended. After this, he came to. So it's pretty much going into the different places that this guy Antiochus the Great is conquering. It says, "Then shall he return and be stirred up even to his fortress." The spring following, he returned with a numerous army and came to Raphia, a fortified city in Egypt, which lay between that and Palestine, where he, where as Strabo says, Ptolemy the Fourth, Philippator, fought with Anto Antiochus the Great. So Daniel's 11 and 12, 10, going into this particular Syrian war between Antiochus the Great and Ptolemy Philippator. It says, and the king of the south shall be moved with Kohler, shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north, and he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into the hand. So Antiochus would uh, go, go on to win this particular battle. Verse 12. And when he hath taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall and he shall cast down many thousand many ten thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. For the king of the north shall return and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former. And shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. Hold on. So let's 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 go back to 12 here. 
because I know Antiochus the Great is going to get uh, assassinated. He says uh, he might have conquered and recovered all again, but he grew proud of his victory and returned again to his luxury. Entering Judea, entering Judea he entered into the temple of, of the Most High at Jerusalem and the holy place against the law. Yet though he cast down many thousand, he was not. So yeah, this guy Antiochus the Great did defile our temples. Um, what they got here in the uh, guild? Because I know um, what what happened was he would go to um, we we weren't the only one that held treasures in our temples. You had these different heathen nations that would go on to do the same. You know. And I think uh, what happened was he tried to sack one of these particular temples, and it was ultimately ultimately assassinated. Let's see. Hmm. So I was lifted up, Antiochus the Great. Hearts were lifted up. He went, it says, went to Jerusalem and forced his way into the holiest of all to offer sacrifices upon the victory of which he, which we see, Third Maccabees chapter one. It says, and he shall cast down tens of thousands. Yet shall he not be strengthened for 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 Antiochus escaped out of his hands, nor he did pursue his victory, and he take all the advantage of it, as he might have done. For as the historians say, he he had, he had he added valor to his fortune, he might have spoiled Antiochus of the kingdom. But content with the recovery of the cities, he lost, made peace, and greedily took the advantage of ease and rolled himself up in luxury, uncleanness, and impotence. Let's see. That is, he will be proud and self-confident. So they pretty much all saying the same thing. This guy pretty much became proud of his victories, which made him lax. So he could have had great. He could have had many more dominion, but until he was just a great, you know, he, 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 you know, he fell back, pretty much. Verse thirteen says, "For the king of the north shall return, shall set forth a multitude greater than the former." And shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. Let's see which king this is going into. <sighs> Antiochus the Great shall raise great forces even from Babylon to Media, Philippator being dead. And Ptolemy Epiphanes, his son, yet a child, under whom Agathocles, uh, a dissolute, proud person, hated of all, governed Egypt as his v uh, viceroy. Okay, so as we see, uh, as the uh, passages are going into, um, Antiochus the Great is still, is still going. He's still going, still conquering. Um, and he's going after uh, Ptolemy. Uh, they had here, pardon me. Uh, Ptolemy Epiphanes. It says, um, verse 14, And in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision but they shall fall. So the king of the north shall come and cast a mount and take the most fenced cities. And the arms of the south shall not withstand neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land which by his hand shall be consumed by it. And I believe that glorious land is going into the land of Israel. Let me just double check that real quick. These fucking devils, man. Um, 
Yeah, they have here the glorious land, I.D. I.E. Judea. The word may be rendered pleasant. Okay. So remember, when these guys are battling against each other, they have to pass through Israel. So when the Ptolemies marching up to the north, and the, or when a, a, a Seleucus is marching marching down to the south, uh, that middle ground right there was uh, Israel. And if you wanted to have victuals and replenish your men, you want to make sure if you're ruling over these people, they're down to help you out. It's funny, man, because today our people lean with one Democrat or one Republican and <laughs> they're sort of doing the same shit back then. Either you, oh, I'm of Ptolemy or I'm of Seleucus, but they were both devils, man. They were both wicked demon heathens. Um, No matter what, none of them uh, wanted us to, to keep our laws, actually, commandments right. They wanted us to uh, um, embrace Greek way of living, which a lot of our people did, man. Verse 17. He shall also set his face to the to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him. Thus shall he do, and he shall give him the daughter of woman corrupting her, but she shall not stand on his side, neither be for him. Here's the pool commentary. He says he shall also set his face to enter the strength of the whole kingdom. Uh, meaning he shall use all of the forces and fraud he can to master Egypt and engross it to himself. But Ptolemy was then young and not able to match him. Um, and the upright ones with him. Oh, here we go. It, this is a very interesting uh, thing right here. It says many of the religious Jews joined with him. Uh, Numbers 31 and 10. Called righteous in opposition to the rest of his army which has composed of idolaters and a profane rabble of rude heathens. A lot of uh, Israelites were joined to these particular kings, man. All right. There was a lot of uh, generals high up in the Ptolemaic dynasty. And there was also a lot of generals high up that were Israelites in the uh, Seleucid dynasty. Um, Antiochus shall give Cleopatra his daughter, who was young, to young Ptolemy called daughter of woman for her for her beauty and rare parts which she afterwards discovered and gave in diary with her with her with her called Syria Phoenice and Judea dividing the tribute and revenues between them so again here we go into another uh, alliance through marriage and we all know this ain't gonna end well man verse 18 after this Shall he turn his face unto the isles and shall take many, but a prince of his own behalf shall court Slakia. But a prince of his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. Without with his own reproach he shall cause it to turn upon him. <clears throat> Right, so the commentary goes on to say, um, Antiochus craftily desist, desisted for a time from the enterprise against Egypt for the fear of the Romans. Right, so the Romans are going to come into play in this particular war. Uh, most notably throughout this was uh, one of the Roman generals putting a circle around um, Antiochus, the fourth Epiphanes, and telling him he wants an answer on what you're going to do. Um, because he couldn't, he didn't have the right to conquer, conquer, conquer a specific part of the Ptolemaic um, um, dynasty because it was under Roman uh, uh, tradition, if you will, right? And the, certain of the Greeks fear the Romans. Both were Edomites, by the way. Some of the Greeks fear the Romans, man. It says, for the fear of the Romans... And dissembling with them, both presumed, uh, presumed he should outwit them all 
and therefore persuaded as many of the Greeks as he could to take part with him against the Romans, sliding and, revi and, and reviling them. Um, by the way, the true Romans um, are the people of Japheth, which did have a, a very long rule over the uh, Roman Empire. But eventually the Romans... Um, the Romans are going to be, uh, the Edomites will adopt, uh, the title of Romans, but the original Romans were Jap Japhetic people, and then, uh, the, the, the whole name that, that goes back to, uh, Romulus, which was a Japhite. It says, but a prince of his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to seats, i.e. a brave Roman ambassador and commander sent by the Roman Senate, Antilius, Antilius and chiefly Scipio, beat Antiochus at his own weapons of power and policy and turned the reproach upon its own head, for they fell upon him because Ptolemy required help of them. Ptolemy sought, sought help from the Romans. This, this is not the only time this is going to happen. Again, I, I just gave an example of that happening with Antiochus IV. Um, that pissed off Antiochus IV, man. That pissed off Antiochus IV. And you know what he did? He took out his anger on our people. He took out on our... Uh, let's Christians speak about the, about the abomination that make, make it desolate. Antiochus IV, um, when he couldn't take that particular uh, rule over a Ptolemaic province, because uh, the Romans wouldn't allow it, he took out his anger on us, man. Which is also accounted in the Maccabees. When you're reading the Bible, man, you can't just read it like a novel, man. It's it's a lot. This is a lot of history. It's a lot of prophecies, all right. And it's our duties to go through it. <clears throat> who besieged by um, Ptolemy required help from them. Who was besieged by Antiochus? They raised the siege and recovered all that he had gotten from them. For the Romans uh, were dexterous. In protecting their allies and restoring uh, indignities and affronts uh, offered them by encroachers or oppressors. So let's read Daniel's eleven eight again. And this shall turn and and this sh shall he turn his face unto the isles, and shall take many, but a prince of for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. With his own approach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. So this guy, uh, the one of the Ptolemies seeking help from the Romans against Antiochus uh, to stop the conquering of a Ptolemaic uh, province. Then he shall turn his face towards the fort of his own land, but he shall, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. So I think we're going to stop right there. Um, just uh, go through that again. Daniel's uh, eleven and eighteen. Wow, we did a lot today. Did a lot. Got through a lot today. Daniel's eighteen. Mm. Yep, Romans uh, helping out Ptolemy here. Man, scripture says Esau search things out, man. Hey, but we gotta search things out too. Scripture says it's the honor of the kings uh, to search out the matter. The book of Proverbs, the uh, twenty-third chapter, I believe. Just making sure that uh, yeah, don't want that. Scipios. Where you get Leo Scipio Africanus? Hmm. All right, we're going to close out on there, brothers. Um, because, you know, now the Romans are going to start playing a uh, factor in these particular wars. 
And um, again, a lot of this stuff is just history. A lot of this stuff, um, as you break it down, Daniel's the 11th chapter. Um, what you could do is you get your different uh, Bible historical scholars. And uh, as you go through each verse, either when you either you want to, um, you know, either you want to use the Bible commentary or you want to use a scholar or or such. And what you what you what you're gonna be seeing is they're pretty much detailing these. Uh, Daniel's pretty much detailing these uh, Syrian wars between the Ptolemaic dynasty, Seleucid dynasty, how it affected Israel. All right. You know, these different particular kings and how beat for beat they follow this this particular chap chapter right here. This chapter is so detailed. This chapter goes into so much detail and everything happened exactly. This is how the prophet said it would happen. All right, because the most high word does not return void. All right. Isaiah uh, is it, uh, 14 and 24. All right, actually, actually, let me um, actually let me go ahead and read that. It's a 14 and 24, 24 and 14. 14 and is it 24? Let's see. Right. Isaiah 14 and 24. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai have sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And I have and, it, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. So everything that the prophet said that the most I shall purpose these uh it will, it will go on to happen throughout history, as the prophet said, man. All right, so I'm going to stop right there. Uh, the first 18 verses of Daniel's the 11th chapter, all right? Uh, going side by side with commentaries, um, and adding uh, certain scriptures and adding certain details. And I hope brothers were edified by that, okay? If you want more, I don't know if I'm going to do another one. But willing this up to the spirit. But the apostles go into it. And we also have the historical um, chronicle uh, playlist out there on the GMS at the point, man. So again, brothers, uh, Slaki, if I wasn't, I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't have like my, like a situation to where I had tabs put up, put up, put up crazy. I was sort of just going off because um, we went through it before, sort of my memory. And um, if these particular commentaries are uh, checked out with this verse and that verse. I, I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashin, Yahweh Shah, Bashin, Rakako Dash, the blinds of the apostles and the elders of Great Mill, Soul True Will. Uh, salutations to the hopeful elect out there. You are came to Zadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. Shalom.